Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar, the community that helps you streamline your processes, sharpen your skills, and demand higher paying projects. My name is Kyle Van Dusen from Ogle Web Design, just outside of Fort Worth, Texas, y'all. And with me as always is my good friend and buddy and co-host, Matt Siebert from Matthew Siebert Design. What's going on today, Matt? Um, well, woke up, took a drive, got to work, everything's good. Okay, waking up's the first start. As long as you do that, it's a good day. Absolutely. No doubt. So we are excited to be live again here with you today. And we are joined by Adam Lacey, the founder of Split Hero, who is here to tell us all about his product and the limited time lifetime deal that he's got going on this week. So hello, Adam. How are you doing today? Yeah, good. Thanks, mate. How about yourself? Excellent. I'm super excited and silly today. So I think it's going to be a good show if people like excited and silly. If you like stuffy and serious, just, uh, well, I mean, you can stay, but you probably won't enjoy it. All right. Well, let's get into this. Let's talk about split hero and split testing and all that we can do. So let's first just let's start off the bat with exactly what is split testing and what does split hero do? Yeah, for sure. So split testing is a way to test multiple variations of a page and see which one leads to more conversions, essentially, um, of what ones lead to your user taking your desired action. So filling an inquiry form, anything like that, basically. Um, and Split Hero is an easy, fast, and effective way to do split testing on your WordPress website. See, it almost sounds like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> it does. It almost sounds like that. So yeah, basically what you're doing is you're just uh, making different versions of your page with Split Hero. You can make like an A, B, C, and D version and test four different uh, versions of a page. And it, Split Hero will split the traffic among those pages and then uh, keep record of everything, how much traffic goes to each page, how many people convert from each page. And then you can decide which page you made is the best. So that's a, that's a good thing to be doing. So when we talk about that, uh, what are some examples of things we could or should be split testing? Yeah, for sure. So for me, I always recommend uh, stick to the stuff that matters. So steer away from just changing the color of a button really isn't going to make that much of a difference. Um, unless you think it's really horrible, which shame on you. Um, but generally speaking, like call to actions. Um, if you've got a hero section, changing sort of your opening message as such to see if you can engage users in a different way. Um, swapping like image for video, that kind of stuff as well is quite powerful. So they tend to be the sort of main three things I recommend people get started with. So do you think this is better for, for pages where you're, where you're having some kind of offer or do you think you can even have, you know, uh, I just changed up one of my service pages. So it's not like a direct sales and yeah. not like they're adding something to a cart on the page. Uh, but I, I kind of changed the way the messaging was on that page. And I thought, Hmm, I wonder how this will do. Uh, and I actually went in there and put it in split hero just to see. Now my conversion was a little funky. I actually, there was one call to action on the page. So I put that next page as the conversion, even though it doesn't really do a whole lot, but do you think something like that is an effective way to use it? Yeah, absolutely. So if you've got a services page, um, Split Hero will track the user for the whole session. So even if you haven't got a direct next page trigger as such, like, so for example, for an agency, um, you can split test, like I said, a variance of your service page, and then that conversion trigger would be ultimately still having a form field in. That form doesn't have to be on that page. So if they obviously land on the service page, land on one of the variations, they can still go for the rest of the site, then go to the contact page and fill that in. And that would still count as a, trend, uh, a conversion based on what service page they landed on. Well, then good. I'm not an idiot. I did something good for once. <laughs> exactly. You're ahead of the curve. Ahead of the curve. That's actually because I got in on this lifetime deal when you first offered a lifetime deal kind of as, as a founding member. Um, and then after that, that deal was gone. And I'm excited that you've kind of brought back this lifetime option for folks. So we're going to talk a little bit more about everything that's included. I mean, I've posted about it in the group and everything. So a lot of you might already have those details, but we'll go into kind of everything that's included in this lifetime deal. And you can get to it right now by going to the admin bar.com forward slash split hero. I wasn't looking at my notes. I had to remember uh, the admin bar.com forward slash split 
hero. So I did want to talk about, uh, I kind of teased in a post this morning, and I want to get both of you in on uh, ideas for this, because it's actually something that I did right away when I got Split Hero, uh, and, and actually started making money from it instead of it costing me money. So I think that's a good way to look at a product like this, is you don't have to have it as an expense, you can actually have this as an asset for your business. So um, a while back, I kind of restructured how I um, how I position and sell my care plans. And really it's more about kind of putting together a package that answers the needs of the customer rather than them fitting into a box, right? So I'm kind of custom doing these for everyone. And what I've done with a few customers is when I know we're going to be uh, worried about conversions or downloads or sales or stuff like that is I've just built split testing into their care plan and said, okay, you know, every month we're going to run some kind of A-B test on your website uh, and that's going to be part of your care plan. And so I've actually marked care plans up. Uh, one of them went up $75 for that option and one went up $125 for that option. Uh, plus they're having to pay me to make versions of the pages. So yeah. with this lifetime deal at $97, you could literally sell that one time to one client for one month and you've paid, paid yourself back. So now anytime you continue to do that, uh, you're actually making more money off the product. And I know, Matt, you, ha uh, you had some customers you're working on doing some split testing with too. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, actually, we're, we're actually sending people to landing pages uh, for weddings. And <clears throat> I know that, uh, Adam, you mentioned like colors uh, of buttons, not really a big thing, but we, uh, we actually went from a, a lavender to a pink and uh, okay. saw way more conversions uh really just gearing Crazy. towards the uh the female demographic sure that's, that's pretty really interesting. interesting yeah oh, that's, that sounds very good absolutely so so what are some other ways you can actually take this and use it and position it with customers have you seen people doing some nifty things with it to uh to make their agency some more money so like say wrapping it into care plans is a great one um, some obviously people using their own agency and, you know, if you convert one extra client in our industry, you know, it easily pays for itself. Um, and the other option is to settle client arguments as well. You know, if you can't come to fighting heads with another a business owner and they think their idea is best and you think your idea is best for a page, just chuck them both into a split test and say, don't worry about it. Let's see what happens. And that they can speak for itself. And um, the data, the data dies and goes to hell if they're right. You just never exactly. tell them. <laughs> yeah, you, you just don't admit it and sort of say, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, mom is way better." <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's a good idea too, because you do have those things with customers, and I go through it all the time. Like, how far do you push back with them when they have a really terrible idea? Uh, and it's kind of a delicate balance, and you figure out exactly, you know, who who you can push far and who you just give up and just say, okay, whatever. But that's a, that's a really good compromise. Okay, cool. I have my idea. You have your idea. Let's see which one's better. Uh, let's put it to the test and find out. Yeah. So and even if you're wrong, you're going to learn something, which is awesome. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, you can't argue with data. Wherever you look at it, you just can't argue with the data. So they like say, if you, if you, if you are wrong, I mean, you know, something new, great. That means you can roll that knowledge out to other customers and, you know, just helps level you up. Yeah. And, and, you know, people talk about, especially with the care plan stuff, I, I actually had a conversation with somebody yesterday. They were talking about uh, how they should do reporting for their care plans. And so I have like a, I'm kind of torn on this subject because if I sent, um, if I sent my customers some report out of main WP that showed I updated this many plugins and there was this many security things and blah, blah, blah they would immediately put it in the trash. It has zero value to them. They don't understand that at all. So with the customers that I know kind of need that, uh, that touch point every month, I try to send them more actionable data. So we'll talk about, you know, um, you know, how many visits they got to the website, more analytics type stuff, or how many things from their Google, my business is sending them traffic. So to be able to add this as another feature to say, Hey, you know, also this month, we ran a test on these two variations and we realized this other version is going to do so much better for you. Uh, so we've put that into place now permanently and we got this new test coming up next month. I mean, anytime you can show that value month after month and everything you're doing, I think, uh, I think it's a win with keeping your care plans on board longer, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not just keep on with board all It's like ultimately you're, you're staying at a major trust point with the client. So next time you've got 
um, a suggestion to them in any shape or form, you firmly sort of back yourself up over and over again every month, month on month, they're going to be like, yeah, cool, go ahead, do it. Like, you know, you're not going to have any pushback at all. Yeah, and and we'll get into kind of how Split Hero itself works, how the platform works. But I will say I did post a video about it earlier this week or last week. Time runs together. I don't know. Um, But I I set up an entire campaign and it took me like 26 seconds. It's so easy. It's ridiculous. (laughs) It's too easy. I think you should make it more difficult. Uh, Are you you telling me you don't want to wrestle with Google Optimize anymore? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. No, you know what? I actually, uh, I had a customer who was uh, before Split Hero existed that really wanted to do some split testing and I messed and messed and messed with Google Optimize. I, I'm an idiot, but I could never get it to work right. Like it was such a pain in the butt and I thought, you know, I'm just going to tell them, sorry, I'm shit out of luck. But I, Split Hero came out like during that time. So we were able to get them on that and make it a whole lot easier. Um, I, I mean, I have that kind of in my notes here to talk about. So I know you you started Split Hero because you saw a need for this product in the marketplace. So kind of talk about how you approach this differently than some of the other competitors out there. Yeah, for sure. So um, I'm always a fan of doing stuff differently, whether that's right or wrong, we'll soon find out over time. But generally speaking, with our competitors, I mean, the, the things we get compared to the most are pretty much VWO, Google Optimize, and um uh what's it? unless they're the three we kind of get when someone goes what makes you different to x it's generally one of those um so if i was to run through those quickly and the reason we kind of kind of falls into the reasons why we've done it um so google optimize as we just kind of said it's super complex it's fiddly it takes time times money you know and my stress and my blood pressures and it's no good for that um so although it's free it's complex. I mean, most agency owners, even myself, like I've done it, I've used it. It's a pain, like where obviously more novices are not going to touch it at all. Um, so everyone shies away from it, even though it's free. The other options, uh, unless it's actually great, it's not really a competitor of ours because what they do is personalization. I don't know why we seem to get that question, but I'll answer it anyway. So unless there's a personalization tool, it's really great. Um, but we're two different, different products or something totally um and then vwo again it's super powerful it's a great tool but it's also targeted towards enterprise level clients so again it's a little bit complex but also it starts at around 150 bucks a month um just for the basic stuff so you know the, the i know it's pretty much a lot of competitors that have either given up because they do want to compete with google optimize for one reason or another or they'd gone uh, enterprise and started charging enterprise level money to clients. Um, for example, Optimizely, I don't know how true it is, but I've heard like, because like I say, they're very, very enterprise level. I've heard they charge around ten to $20,000 a year for their platform. I don't know how true it is, but they've they got no price on their website, so I'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that goes to tell you, though, how how valuable split testing can be for folks. So, you know, when you, when you can present this idea to the right type of client, you know, my prices of adding $75 a month or whatever to the care plan might be really low. Uh, I hadn't done it enough to find out how far I could push that, but for literally something that it takes me a few seconds to set up to make a, you know, uh, almost a hundred dollars a month off of is a, is a total win in my book. And not even just that, that direct sale from it, the, the increase in dollars through that, but the, the fact that I know I'm going to keep them on a care plan longer because the longer I can keep them on the care plan, the longer that or the higher that customer lifetime value is uh, and the more I can sleep easy at night knowing that, you know, bills are paid for with recurring revenue. Um, I do want to get into kind of the nuts and bolts of how this works, but I, I want to mention like we talked about some ways to use it with like care plans or with your own with your own uh, website. But I will say the other thing I'm working on doing and I have one test going right now is uh, for my funnel packs. So I, I've set up, you know, we had um, most of, you know, Matt Davies and, and Mel's product funnel packs and how it works and it's uh, sales funnels for your own agency. Um, so I've, I have uh, seven or eight of them running right now. And what I'm trying to do is just run different versions of those landing pages and then kind of have them compete with each other and see how they work because it's a really 
simple thing to do as far as setting variations, especially with the tools we use, Elementor, or, you know, whatever you're using for a page filter, you can make some variations to these pretty quickly, maybe change, you know, uh, the way the cover looks or even the title, uh, you know, the headline you have in there and kind of see what, um, what converts better. So I think if you're somebody that already has funnel packs, uh, this is a great complimentary thing to go with funnel packs. If you don't have funnel packs, well, then what the hell are you doing? You need to go get it and get split hero. And then you're going to have a, a winning combination. But I do want to say, you know, I think it's like the perfect marriage, these two products together. Totally. Yeah. I couldn't agree more with any sort of landing page funnels and funnel packs in particular, which is super well put together. It's just no brainer, like you say, because everyone audience is slightly different. I mean, Muna is an excellent copywriter, so what you get in funnel packs is fantastic already. But if you feel like you want to tweak it ever so slightly because your audience is slightly maybe more formal or informal or, you know, however it may be, um, then you've got that option and testing both versions. Yeah, and one yeah. of the things that I really like about just split testing in, in general is that it never it never ends, not really. I mean, you can, you can A, B test something, A, B, C test, like whatever. And then when you find that that winner of that group, then you make a couple more and you just you keep optimizing it until, you know, yeah. you I mean, you you don't stop. You just keep making small changes, seeing what works. And if, if the, the new ones don't trash those, try something else and just continue on. It's uh, it's super nerdy and a lot of fun. Like, really, like as somebody that, that likes the uh, the analytics and the, the user tracking and all of that stuff, like. Yeah. yeah, you can you can dig into it real deep. And, you know, just because Split Hero is so quick and easy to set up, it's it's a no brainer. It really is. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if talking about in terms of like how important it is, how valuable it is, I mean, one of the biggest companies I know that actually actively do it is Intercom. Um, the live chat guys, like they're always A B testing, uh, split testing their pricing, funny enough, of all things. Um because you can check it several times a year. I can guarantee you the price will be different mm -hmm. because they're still trying to find their sweet spot. They're still trying to work out exactly, you know, what works for them, but also not what gets them the most sales, but necessarily gets them the best type of client that's actually going to churn and stay on a subscription, you know? Right. Um, so yeah, they're, they're always testing their, their pricing um, several times a year. I know that because I've seen it myself. So. Um, yeah, that just goes to show it really doesn't matter. Yeah, and it's kind of one of these things where we as designers or developers, we kind of just rest on our instincts or our experience to say, okay, I think this is what's going to work. But, you know, you, you've been wrong before and you might be wrong again. And it's pretty interesting to find out. Um, I will say in here, we just got a question that I'd like you to clarify um, before we jump into nuts and bolts yeah so beth livingston asked uh is this 97 dollars monthly or one time so for pretty much for like i think we've got like what six seven days left so it's a week only pretty much but yeah it's one time payment so uh someone said someone asked me the other day does lifetime really mean lifetime or you're going to pull something funny on me and i said well until i die does that count like you know, <laughs> <laughs> if something got really wrong i think it's okay um, and in terms of like say split testing and like say sometimes we're wrong, my wife does not wrong all the time. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. And I think the reason I, I'm, I'm, I highlighted Beth's question here because I think it kind of brings up the point. I think I put in my post, this is like, this is almost a silly deal. Like yeah, people it's, can't that, believe it. it's, yeah. it's that good of a price that you have to go, wait, do you mean a month? Cause at a month, like, okay. Okay, I'm still kind of in on that, but <laughs> just one time ever, and I never have to pay you again. This is awesome. Yeah, exactly. And funny enough, like before, I think it was you, a couple of the other guys as well. When I was sort of like, right, well, okay, this is kind of what we're gonna do, and this is the price it's gonna be. Everyone was like, man, that's really cheap, and I was like, yeah, but it'll be okay. <laughs> and they're like, are you sure you don't want to charge a bit more? I'm like, nah, be fine. Nice and dollars, it's all good. <laughs> Well, uh, I think I think it's a pretty sweet deal here. So let's talk about kind of the nuts and bolts of how this works. Um, so so let's say uh, I sign up for this lifetime deal right now, and I already have two pages I want to test. Uh, where do I start, and how does this work? Yeah, for sure. Um, so if you've got your pages and your variations already set up in WordPress, so if you're going from complete new account sign up what you do is obviously you need to connect your website to our platform super simple there's i'd like to think our dashboard is pretty self-explanatory but there's a domain section so you connect up your first domain 
um, as a plugin to download and it has your API key and that kind of stuff. So you literally just download that plugin, install and activate it like you would normally. Um, and then enter your API key in the settings page for the plugin on WordPress, click sync. And then there's a create a campaign button in your plugin settings page, which will bring you back to the Split Hero dashboard. Um, and then you click create a new campaign in Split Hero, select your pages you want to test, select uh, the target page for your conversion trigger. So a thank you page after an inquiry form is the most classic one. Um, and then from there, set the dates you want to run it for and click go. And that's pretty much it from a setup point of view. Um, for the techie people who want to know how it works, basically you send all your traffic to the first page you set in the campaign. So it's URL A, as we always refer to it as. So you send all your traffic there. If you're going to do any marketing, pay-per-click ads, social, anything like that, you send all the traffic to that URL. And Split Hero will dynamically redirect all the traffic between the variations in the campaign and collect all that data for you as well. Um, so yeah, it really does all the hard work. And all you got to do is logging at either the end of the campaign or check on it every now and again if you say wish and just see the data. Yeah, and so what happens when, let's say, uh, I visit somebody's page and unbeknownst to me, I'm being, you know, the, the page is being redirected to a B version and I come back to that later. Might I see the A version or am I going to see the B version again? So you'll see the B version. This is something really clever that my developers built in um, and it's super great, but it's also, because a lot of people, the issue we're kind of having is people like, I don't know if it's working because <laughs> they can't see the other variation. And there's a reason for that. And the reason is um, basically we store loads of information in terms of like a uh, browser agent, and IP address, and loads of other stuff that he's built in. Um, and that's so the visitor always get the version they initially saw. It stops any confusion. Um, and yeah, and it also means the data is more reliable because for example, if they land up on B at one time, but then they come back and they go to A and then they convert like, you know, was it a true conversion, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So. Generally speaking, that person will always get hit with the same page. Um, if you want to know your campaign's actually running, just have a look in the dashboard. And as long as the variations are receiving traffic, you'll see the stats and the numbers of visitors in there. Um, and, and then you know it's actually working because those pages weren't getting any traffic, then it wouldn't show. Right. Yeah. It's And, and like Adam said, uh, the dashboard is completely self-explanatory. Setting up a campaign, you won't need to lodge a support ticket to do it. It's it you you'll see how to do it instantly and and the way with the the wordpress plugin so you you install that on your site and press the sync button and then when you go back to your dashboard and pull the drop down menu you'll see every page that's on your website so they're communicating back and forth you don't really have to um you don't really have to do anything techy to make it happen if you can install a plugin then you can pretty much handle split testing uh with split hero so that's a pretty awesome thing that is not like google optimized <laughs> Um, I'm just looking at a comment. So, jumping to answer Matt's question about GDPR. yeah, yeah, go for it. Um, so, yeah, so GDPR, as we all know, is a super gray area because no one's actually <laughs> decided exactly what it means or how it's done. Um, we've got a really robust privacy policy. Um, unfortunately, there is no way for users to actually opt out of tracking because otherwise the system just doesn't work. So, it's kind of pointless you know, in retrospect. Um, so basically, all we say our users is to make sure obviously that our users are compliant. So it, it's covered in their privacy policy that they use tracking for marketing purposes, etc. And, that, and that's kind of it. Other than that, um, if someone sent us a request to remove data, we can do that uh, as part of GDPR. But yeah, generally speaking, there's, there's no issues there. Yeah, and I imagine you, you're not tracking anything. I mean, you're not tracking their name and social security number and stuff. So even... Yeah all this gray area of GDPR, I doubt you're going to be in any kind of, uh, any kind of hot water there. But if you need, uh, Hans would kill me if I didn't do this right now. So if you need a privacy policy, you could go to termageddon.com, the greatest company on earth, I think was the latest slogan we used for him. <laughs> so shout out to Hans on that one. Um, awesome. So uh, we kind of got an idea of how the nuts and bolts of this work and why you should be doing it. So why don't you tell us what all's included in this lifetime deal? We're used to AppSumo where we go there and we realize it's a lifetime deal, but you need to stack 42 codes to make it any good. <laughs> Uh, and I don't think this one's like that. So let's uh, let's talk about what's included in this lifetime deal. Yeah, for sure. So um, literally $97 one-time fee. Uh, you can connect it to unlimited websites. 
unlimited page views, unlimited visitors. You're going to get all the current features as well as the new features on the roadmap and anything else we decide to develop upcoming. Um, and the reason I specify that is because I know in the past there's been certain companies out there have said, oh, no, this is our company 2.0, therefore the deal no longer applies. We're not That's doing like anything. every AppSumo deal, I'm pretty sure. Uh, <laughs> so we don't do anything like that. And to be honest, it's the same with our um, making impressions clients as well. It, like if we develop it, everyone gets it. We've got one plan. It's nice and simple. There's no confusion. Uh, there's no agency plan. Everyone gets everything. If you decide not to use one of our features, that's cool. That's up to you. But like everyone gets access to everything. Um, and then you can run a free active campaigns at any one time. And then additional campaigns are available for a discounted rate of $2 a month each. Yeah. So you can have unlimited sites, uh, unlimited connections to, uh, you know, and do unlimited tests with unlimited data. You know, the only thing that's in there is that you can run three tests at a time. And I know I've seen a couple people uh, bring that up. So I just want to make sure that that's clear. You'll be able to run three split tests at one time, but you've made it super affordable if somebody says, well, three's not enough for me. What do I need to do? Do I need to buy two of these and spend, I don't know, whatever 97 times two is I'm not good at math. Or is there a better option for us, Adam? Yeah, exactly. So literally, um, the reason we've done it with sort of maybe what some deem a lower limit of active campaigns and then having the add-on available is to be totally honest, without recurring revenue, these companies die. We've seen so many AppSumo products die. Um, but also like free was kind of the sweet point we found most people needed. Most people only needed around free. Um, and like some people might have one site and they want to run free campaigns on that site, which is totally cool. Some people might run a one, uh, run a campaign on three different sites, so they've got you know three different sites with one campaign each. Um, with the additional campaigns, we're just finishing up code. Well, we're just working on code and that in because we've actually got a discounted rate, so we're still working on that. But it'll be live in a, in a few weeks, I imagine. Um, like I said, they're available at two dollars a month each, but they're totally upgradable and downgradable on a month by month basis. So if one month you sign up, like I say, if you sign up to new clients just for split testing, say you want to sell them um, a pay per click package and you're going to sell them landing pages and then split testing with that and you go right okay i need 10 extra tests that's going to cost you obviously 20 dollars or whatever so it's nothing at all um and likewise if you know if that client drops off or you get more next month again you can scale it up scale it down um, and any time you can scale down to completely no more recurring payments back to your lifetime deal that never disappears that will stay your base package and literally, like I say, this way, like you say, you're not stacking codes, you're paying for what you need. So, because a lot of people have said to me, like, man, this really should be unlimited campaigns. Um, and the reason it's not viable for us is because we actually do a lot of the heavy lifting server side for us. So it's not as much stress when you're hosting. Um, so because of that, obviously, there's costs involved with that. And like I say, this way, you're only paying for what you need. So if you truly need loads, like if you come to me and say, Adam, like only 200 tests, let's talk. I'm sure we can sort something out. But generally speaking, most people only need 10, 20, 25. And that's an affordable sort of range to be able to do that with. Right. And the I ability like to, to you know include that in your care plans or mark it up. I mean, that's still, I mean, it's basically free. Like, I mean, yeah. for all intents and purposes, as long as you're you're adding to it, it's good to go. Well, it's less than, less than a coffee, isn't it, really? If you think right. of it that way. Yeah, it's like four yeah. coffees or no. Yeah. It, what am no. I trying to say? No, four of them are a coffee. Yeah, a fourth of a coffee. Dude, you're yeah, terrible right. at math too. <laughs> I had to correct you on that. I feel I feel like Adam, you uh, bought a bunch of App Sumo deals and then got really pissed in the end about how all <laughs> the things work and decided I'm not doing any of it. Like I'm changing the whole system. <laughs> I like yeah, that. But, yeah, it's funny because um, there's been some great opportunities, but I'm very picky about what I buy. Admittedly, I've only bought like a compared to some people, I've probably bought maybe. Um, <laughs> Paul Lacey. I mean, I'm sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I've only bought ever a, hand, a handful of them. But, yeah, everyone, you know, stacking all that. This thing kind of makes sense. I'm a simple man. I like things to be simple. The whole idea of the platform simple to use. Our pricing simple. There's one plan. You can't go wrong. It's just all about being simple for me. Uh, and that way, for us, there is a benefit. It's not as hard work for us to maintain stuff. It means we can put more focus into actually doing features and integrations and stuff like that, um, rather than having 10 different plans and different options and upgrades and 
um yeah so we keep it nice and simple just that's the whole philosophy really. that's going to make the admin side of it way easier for you too so i applaud that yeah. so let's talk about you said you know you talked about uh future things and the roadmap kind of what things are on your radar right now or what things are being worked on or what things are in the plans i think you have a public roadmap out there is that right yeah yeah exactly yeah so again that's something i want to be totally uh transparent about um we fully public roadmap people can upvote features uh, suggest new features i can't say we'll obviously build everything people request because it's only really what we deem should be right for the platform but generally speaking like most people have had some really good ideas we've taken loads of suggestions on board um like i say yeah literally check it out but the main things we're sort of working on in the near future we've got probably in a few weeks time we've got basically cart flows and woocommerce integration coming out um, which people are really quite excited for. So you'll be able to split test your part those pages um, and you'll be able to, you know, maybe test two different WooCommerce product pages and use the WooCommerce checker endpoint as your conversion goal. So um, they're two really big ones, but the one we're really working on uh, is the white label PDF reports. So like say, if you're a care plan, something like that, um, an agency, this way you'll be able to literally pop your logo into our system, generate a, a PDF report, take that to your customer. Um, and then I'm sure we'll add to that over time and maybe have it so you can email it straight to the customer stuff but we start getting into another world of complexity there. So for now, but yeah, white label PDF reports, I think is going to offer real good value to agencies um, and care plan clients alike really. Yeah, I think that's a that's a good one there. And and you talked about uh, with cart flows too. That's going to be a pretty. I mean, if you're using cart flows, you're already kind of worried about how your conversions are working, kind of by nature, or you would just use a WooCommerce checkout. Uh, so I think the fact that you could stack this on top of cart flows is a pretty great idea as well. Yeah, totally. Um, and like I said, we've got some more complex stuff coming up. Hopefully, I know my developers in this chat, so he's probably sitting there rolling his eyes going, you didn't tell me that. Because um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure every time I do one of these calls, it comes up and goes, so that thing you kind of promised everyone, we haven't really discussed it yet. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah, so I'm, I know you can do it. So it's cool. Um, but I think we've covered most things recently, actually. But um, we're going to be looking at basically at the moment, like they say, for measuring conversions, we look to land on a page. Um, but basically we're going to be looking at doing on button click tracking. We're not sure exactly how that looks, but basically we'll track a conversion once someone clicks a button you want them to click essentially. Um, but we're still trying to work out, you know, the intricacies of that, but, uh, that's probably the next major technical update. Awesome. Well, uh, I think we got a few questions here in the, uh, the chat. So let's, uh, let's blow through a couple of those and then we'll wrap this thing up. Matt, do you, did you see any off, uh, off hand here you wanted to read out? I'm scrolling through now. Do you have one? So uh, Matt Davies asked if we can brand the uh, the white label reports. How will those work or how do you have it in mind? Yeah, so I have it in mind that basically you'd be able to, uh, to start with, it'll mainly just be able to add logo to the top so you can add your company logo to the top. Uh, but there'll be no mention of Spit Hero anywhere or anything like that. So um, yeah, have your logo and then the data for you know, the campaign on it. Simple enough. Um, let's see. Uh, we've got David saying uh, that he's using Divi and uh, asking how this differs from their inbuilt split testing. Yeah, so with Divi, um, like I said, they've got it inbuilt. Like, it's okay. Um, I think, obviously, it's also a case of um, it's probably a little bit more fiddly set up um, and also all the strings on your server because it's just a plugin. Um, so, like I said, there's not loads of variations right this second if you were to pick out now, but if you're going to look at what's coming in the very near future, like all the features we're going to add and implement, it's going to be far more powerful, really. Um, and this is what all the lifetime deals about, really, is to get people excited for the future. By now, by the end of the year, we're going to have a normal powerful product. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Rick asked, how many visits are you think is the, the, the minimum number to make an adequate test? That's a good question. Yeah, for sure. So I always say to people, it really depends because it depends on the quality of traffic as well. Like we can have loads of really bad quality traffic and then it kind of skews results. Likewise, you could probably get away with less numbers if you know the traffic's really highly qualified of your target audience. As a rule of thumb, um, I normally estimate the high hundreds to low thousands of unique visitors a month. 
So if you're in the remit of like, you know, 750, 800 and above, you're at a really good starting point, uh, starting to break into split testing. Yeah, that is a good question. And, and, you know, you don't want to run these tests with, you know, 50 visits over a three day period and draw a whole bunch of conclusions from them. Um, you exactly. just need more data on something like that to make a really smart decision because there's, there's not just the factors you put into the AB test, there's all the other external factors that go into it as, as well. So when you can get a whole lot more tests going, you kind of narrow those down. So, all yeah, right. I mean, that's another thing to touch on as well is the, uh, people asking how long should I test for because I've seen people run test for a week and generally unless you're doing like a lot a lot of traffic in that week um, just due to human behavior it's not really enough so I say a month minimum if you have got time and uh, a lot of traffic like a decent amount of traffic three months is a real good time period um, to get some real quality data but there's nothing wrong with doing like you say monthly care plans doing one a month perfectly fine as long as you've got the traffic to do that um for your own business like i said if you can do one every three months so you're doing sort of four a year that's a really good way to boost up your conversions and we had one more question come in here we'll probably end on this one uh david mccann asks: is it it is currently set up page versus page any plans on testing on page elements like calls to actions headlines images etc where you didn't have to have a, a two different urls yeah for sure so I've been asked this a few times, and honestly, uh, no. <laughs> Just because it's fundamentally how the platform works with redirects and everything like that, we kind of have to build up so another product just to do that. Um, and there's just not really a need. And because, like I say, really, you should only be changing one element at a time, roughly speaking, anyway. So I, I don't see there's too much hardship to duplicate your page, make the change you want to do, make sure that page is now indexed, you're good to go. Simple as that. Shout out to the duplicate page plugin. I love that thing. Yeah. So, and, and you know, the Elementor had a split testing thing there for a while where you could test different elements yes. within a page. But I think it's, uh, I saw Dave Foy talk about it the other day that it's, it looks like it's dead. It hadn't been updated in a while. Isn't working. Yeah, I heard that too. He said, uh, I think it was a few weeks ago, they said it had sort of not been updated, wasn't being maintained anymore, and died a death a little bit. Um, so it's a good time for any elemental users that want to split test to jump on board. But um, it's like changing, I mean, thinking about it from a user interface and like user experience tr- point of view of trying to change on page elements, um, it gets tricky to track what you've set up split tests on. For example, unless you've got to open every single module and have a look at it you're not going to really know. You've got to try and remember what you did and what you've set up. Um, I can guarantee people that probably have set up on element changes and obviously maybe a few months down the line or even a few weeks down the line. If your memory is anything like mine, it'll be a few days down the line. Um, like you would have forgot what you, unless you've written it down or made a note somewhere, you would have forgot what you've actually set what to do. So Right. You know. And the whole point of this is to make it super easy. So let's just keep with making it super easy. I like that. Um, exactly. Yeah. And uh, Chris Castillo just made a really good point. Um, from a user experience point of view on the end user, he's totally right. There's not actually a way in tech quite yet. Um, there's always a flash of content before it changes. So if you're actually testing two headlines, you'll see the original. Then you see a flash and it will change to the new one. Um, like there's some big companies out there who are doing some really exciting things with that to stop that happening. But unless you're going to go with one of the super expensive options um, and they're still ironing out the details, then like say, yeah, it's just not saying anyone can do it at the moment. I do have, I have one last question and then we'll finish this out. Let's say somebody is on here watching right now and they've decided they're going to buy this and then they decide that we're total liars and they hate it and it's not easy to use. Are they stuck with giving you $97? Now, I think they're mad, but other than that, um, that that's totally cool. I completely stand by in my 30-day refund period. So um, I do say if you do come across any bugs, like I said, we are an early platform. So if you do come across anything, uh, we've had a couple of users uh, at the very start when we launched, like they just left rather than telling me there was a problem. If there's an issue, tell me and we fix it. Like, you know, we're pretty quick at fixing stuff. At the moment, we're actually pretty solid. There's a couple of minor bugs, um, but they're visual. They're not actually functionality bugs or anything like that. So, um, yeah, 30 day refund period, any reason I'd like you to tell me why you're leaving, but if you say you don't like it, simple as that, that's fine. Um, a full refund, no, no questions asked. Well, that, that's easy enough. This is a no brainer for real. I think, uh, 
I think anybody here could use this and make some money with it. Not only use it on your own site and learn some things and get better conversions, but throw it on a customer site and have it pay for itself in one month. I mean, you can literally be out nothing on this. So I think it's a pretty good deal. So I do appreciate you coming on. Matt, do you have anything to add to this before we get out of here? No, I think we touched all, all the uh, the topics that we wanted to, for sure. Answered a lot of questions. And uh, I'm seeing in the comments that everybody's very excited. So that's awesome. It's good for yeah. me. It makes it, it does, uh, it's kind of why I do it. So yeah, no, I super appreciate like when people get excited. And uh, Adam's a part of the group here. So if you tag him in a post, I'm uh, I'm sure he'll get back to you. I know he's uh, he's probably sweating this week, uh, literally and figuratively with a lot going on. So uh, give him a minute if you send him a message, but he's in the community and I'm sure he'll be glad to respond. So uh, anything else, Adam, before I wrap us up and get us out of here? No, that's perfect. Like you say, if I don't reply to you, just tag me because there's like comments everywhere at the moment. I'm trying to keep up. So um, but I'll always get back to you. So tag me if I miss you. Awesome. No doubt. All right, guys. Well, uh, as a reminder, if this group helps you in any way, the easiest way for you to help us is to share the content, subscribe to the YouTube or podcast channel, and uh, you could buy Split Hero at theadminbar.com forward slash forward slash Split Hero. Uh, and all this is free for you. It takes a little time and it greatly helps support the show. We will catch you all inside the group. Bye bye. one of us i know so by the time i get to agency transformation live next year i expect i will have a full british accent